we're the Juicy Ladies and we are here at the Hackney Empire in London for the Jonathan McReynolds concert. We're about to go and speak to him, so we'll catch you after this. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. So I wanna give you the glory today. Paul called it a thorn in his flesh, whatever. All it is is it's a 
it's a departure from perfection. It's a real it's a realization that, you know, you suck without God. So please go find him. Please go pursue him. And uh, you know, even with my limp, uh, you know, thankful, I'm thankful that God loves me throughout it. But I'm also thankful that I can keep on walking. And he loves that. He loves us to come with the limp. I guess he likes watching the zombies follow him. Uh, because uh, that's certainly what he has for all the heavy laden burdened. Please come to me and I'll give you rest. Preach on. Preach on. the first album, you have the huge track, No Grain. And on this one, you have uh, Pressure, which is a great track. And both of them deal with issues of identity. Um, so for yourself, as a young Christian, how have you dealt with the pressure of um, balancing remaining relevant as well as being for Christ? Uh, I think relevant is such a such a, a, a boring thing, not a boring thing, but such a... Wow, just oh. a boring question. <laughs> no, 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 why do I say this? <laughs> being, relevant, <laughs> being relevant is such a weird pursuit to me. Okay. It's, it's kind of, I don't want to say dumb, but it's kind of it's kind of a waste of your time to try to be relevant. Just be you. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why, you know, it's such a new thing for Christianity to try to be so relevant. When, over all this time, the only thing that allowed people or brought people to Christ was their own testimony, people's testimony, to Jesus being lifted up and drawn up. I don't understand why everybody has to be quote-unquote relevant. Mm -hmm. Just be you. So this whole thing is just me being me. Um, you know, of course, there are some chances that I want to take as a musician, chances I want to take as a producer, as a songwriter, and I want to work with certain people. But when it comes to just being relevant, just be you. And I promise you, that's the most effective version of you, not the relevant version of you. Just be you. You know, I hope that the juicy ladies, I hope you guys are just juicy all the time. Yes! yes. You guys are just, you wake the up juicy. juicy. The juicy. Yes. It's hitting. It's hitting. You don't have to take, you don't have to go get the bottle of juice no. and throw it over yourself. No, you wake up juicy. You wake up juicy. You wake up relevant because that's who you are. I love that. You are relevant and you will always be relevant to the people that you are called to be relevant wow. to. I feel it. I will always be juicy. You will always be juicy. Amen. You don't have to and you know what else? We impart the juiciness. <laughs> I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> wow. You have to skin that one last bit you just I really? I'm yeah. sorry. I just don't want all the I don't want the juice. Okay, alright. Jonathan says he doesn't want the juice. I don't want the juice. Right? Right? Yes, yes, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks good on you guys. <laughs> right. I don't know if it's gonna look good on you. Talking about juice. Okay. You and India and me. Mm, -hmm. now there's juice. She's still a song on your album. <laughs> That's juice, yeah. She's still a song on your album. You guys have always seen singing together, but I've seen you guys singing together. She declares herself that she's your number one fan. Where did this relationship come from? Well, it started at uh, BT Celebration of Gospel. I mean, she'll tell the story better than I can because, uh, you know, there were a few people that brought her music, assuming that she'd already heard of me. And she's like, I don't know who this guy is. And she just started listening to it. She started to love it. Uh, so by the time we got to the BT, BT Celebration of Gospel, where we performed together for the first time, uh, she was, you know, we kind of became fast friends. Of course, we think alike musically. Uh, yeah, and, it's uh, definitely a synergy in sound. Though. Yeah, and you know, we have a similar approach towards music. I listened to her when I was growing up. I didn't listen to everything, mm -hmm. but I listened to her. And I think sometimes you can grab more from the people that you don't listen to every day than the people you do listen to. Because right. what I did love about her and Paul McCartney and John Mayer and Stevie Wonder was how they approached music and songwriting the way they wanted to. Yeah. They didn't they weren't trying to get a formula going on. So they, so what did all four of those people do? They changed the genre that they were in. Because they were just themselves. They weren't trying to be relevant. They weren't trying to be fine juicy. <laughs> they were just trying to be them. And so what when they did that, they affected the entire genre around them. And so that's what spoke to me more than don't you want to make a gospel song? Don't you want to make a church song? Don't you want to make an R&B song? Don't you want to make a cool song? A trap song? What do you want to do? No, I just want to write what what I can sing. I want to write what makes sense to me. Um, that mean, that for that reason I can preach every single one of my songs. When somebody asks, hey, can you uh, bring a message? Okay, uh, maintain because it's me. Yeah, it's yeah. actually me. It's not anything I you know heard about and tried to write about. No, that's just that's me. And I can sing that on any instrument, in any time, in any living room, or in any stage. 
uh, because that's really who I am and they were really who they were. So it's really cool to meet India because when we get on stage, we know that if we can just be who we are, it'll be okay. Awesome. We can make mistakes and everything. We make a whole bunch of mistakes. We just laugh it off. Why? Perfection is so overrated. Oh, I need to so tell that to a few people. You know, and I, I really hope that um, that people seeing this just can draw from. You're so comfortable. So you're just comfortable. Like, you know, this is who I, I am. am. This is what I, I am. am. But I mean, but this, this is the way. But yeah. In terms of your approach to your music and ministry and what you do, what you present of yourself, it was like, oh, I mean, it flies, it flies. But this is what I like to do. You know, I mean, you, you do want to strive for that. So you <laughs> want to strive, and you know, I've I've gone to school. You know, I've, I've done you know a lot of things. I still study, I still practice, I still do all that. So it's not like you just stop wherever you can do right now. That's all you need for the rest of your life. No, but I do I challenge people, particularly in this generation, just to be yourself. Yeah. We have this flawless perfection mentality. Go look at anything that God created, and it is not perfect. Every mm -hmm. mountain has crooked stuff going on. Every tree is weird. Okay, it's now magic. yes. We're the only people that sit here and try to make straight lines for everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so I really believe that the best things, the things that have the character, the things that have God uh, in them, they are kind of imperfect. Mm -hmm. They're not so fit in the box. So that's all I'm trying to do is stay in that place where I'm not trying to be amazing. Okay. Now, you might get this question often, but we have to ask you this time. Are you Mr. McReynolds in a relationship? I'm not in a relationship. No. Why not? You know what? A whole man like you at this age. Like all of you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, um, you know I, I, of course, I, I date from time to time. I just got out of a relationship. Um, but, you know, honestly, this lifestyle, even though it begs for it, it's also very difficult to date in this particular lifestyle. Why? Yeah. First of all, you know, people have a lot of preconceived notions. They have expectations. Two, you uh, have to be very... Uh, Cautious, yeah. you know, because a lot of people see, you know, crazy folks out there. <laughs> so, you know, the craziness for me would be magnified a little bit. Yeah. You know? So, uh, I just try to be smart. Uh, I think that this time in my life is probably not the best time for me to do anything anyway. Yeah. You know, this is kind of my life right here. It's, okay. it's my career and all that other stuff. So, you know, but when she comes, I'll drop it. Oh. Everything I'm doing is for her. Wow. Wow, that is a declaration. That right? is a declaration. Come on. Do you make me as happy as I can be? Your love is a guarantee in a world of changes. You and I together stay on my mind. You are the truth and the lie. And there's no other way. I gotta have you. I gotta have you. I gotta have you. I gotta have you. Turn up and you went, what? 